Hi there. What's on my mind today is all about item records and URL links. So this isn't anything new. It's one of your everyday cataloging functions, uh, but I thought it might um, be a way of using item records that you haven't thought about before. And this is specifically in the context of eBooks. Um, this actually came out of a um, one of our recent open discussions, which was when we were talking about managing eBooks in your library with Koha. So alongside all of the things to do with importing records and authentication and um, and uh, managing ebook records generally. Um, one of the topics we looked at was managing the ebook links themselves in uh, the uh, records on Koha. So, of course, the traditional way to maintain links in an ebook record is, of course, using the 856 tag um, along with the subfield U for the URL and perhaps the subfield Z for linking text. So just as a little reminder here, let's have a look for <clears throat> language of dance um, and just search in the catalogue here. So the record that I'll start with looking at is a traditional one. So here we got the language of dance and we can see we've got online access listed and there's quite a few uh, links listed there. If we look at the um, full record display, we can see we've got a link to the resource through Project Muse. Uh, then we've got a link here out to licensing information. And we've got a link here for specific library access. So access for the Liberty Library, which may well be a different URL. And we've got access for Fairfield Library, which may again be a different URL. So specifically in, um, uh, in, in multiple multi um, library organizations, you've potentially got different URL links that you need to reference in the bibliographic record. Another traditional way of handling ebooks is, of course, to create perhaps a dummy item record, a single item record that would um, allow you on the OPAC side to use a filter for searching and so on. So just out on the OPAC view, let's have a little look at that. <clears throat> When you're looking on the OPAC at your record, um, you've got your online resources and you've got your links built up here. And the way that the styling displays by default is with delimited by pipes here. And you can see that um, the clarity of that display, um, it, it's it, unless you were applying a lot of CSS perhaps to, to configure that display, it, it makes it quite cumbersome. It's quite difficult to read. Um, and particularly, for example, if you were coming in from the Liberty Library and you just wanted to find that record for the Liberty Library so you can easily get access to it, you're going to miss out because um, we've only got one default copy record for that particular library. Um, so uh, what you could do is uh, have a different approach um, and instead of uh, using and embedding your uh, URL links within the 856, a simple alternative would be to use your URL that lives in the copy records. So let's just pop back out to the um, staff side, the staff UI again, I'll just go back to my results because I have in my list here an alternative language of dance record. And if we take a look at this one instead, we can see that we don't have a reference to the 856 in the bibliographic record itself. But what we have got is our placeholder item types for ebook with different lines for each of the relevant URLs for that record. So we've got links to resource and public notes for each of those different values. So there's my Project Muse open access book link. We've got a row here for the, um, the the licensing information, a separate URL again. And then we've got the two different accesses, access for library A, which of course is going for my to my Fairfield library. And then we've got access for the second library, which is associated with the Liberty Library. So we've got a difference on the OPAC view here. When we go out to that record, um, instead of uh, having a long string of URLs that you might end up with if you've got different organizations with different access points, what we've got instead 
is a nice grid because I mean I think we can all agree that the holdings table on the OPAC um, in Koha is very clear it's very concise it's easy to see exactly what you've got we've got our links to the resources listed here and we've got accompanying notes and that could be information about your licensing it could be uh, ways to access um, the materials um, and um, so really a nice alternative and quite a few libraries when we just ran through this it's a very straightforward thing just embed your pipe um your your um your record your item record if we just take a look on the staff side again if i go into edit here <clears throat> um all you need to do is um add your url into the pipe U of the um, item record here, you can add an, its item type and you'd put in any public notes that you want to display on the OPAC. So really simple way um, of handling that. And the beauty of that, again, in a multi-site environment is that if you do have different access routes, if I just go into for different libraries, if I go back to my home page again, and now if I look for language of dance and look for and put my selection on here for Liberty Library, uh, so I can do my um, narrow down by library here, click on search, and it's just going to retrieve my uh, relevant title that gives me my uh, link to my Liberty and a, a library and gives me my specific link that, of course, might there might be different access routes, different materials purchased for different libraries. So that's, again, one of the benefits that you have over using the 856. Um, the final thing that I thought might be nice just to show uh, was um, a little bit of CSS to sort of bump those URL um, uh, displays up um, and increase their visibility. So um, we can see the link there and I, I suppose it, you might think it, it could get a little bit lost on that page. Um, how can we make it look a bit um, more obvious if I just pop back into my staff UI and what we're going to do is just apply a little bit of CSS in the OPAC user CSS if I just find that system preference and go out to that click to edit and I've already got it um, put in here with commented out but um, I can use my um, console tools in the browser to find the element that describes that material which have uh, that particular value cell value on the page um, I've added uh, to increase the size of the um, the text giving it a bold weight and a little bit of background color so let's see that how that shows when I save those OPAC preferences and then just refresh the page here so on my display here refreshing it I now get a nice green URL link. It could be any color you like. So it just bumps up the display, makes it really clear to users um, when they're looking for their electronic book resources on the OPAC. Uh, so a not quite a nice straightforward one, but um, I thought it might be good to share. So thanks very much for listening. Bye.